Wyoming from the Cleve Hill Fire Department. This year, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we're going to take you on a virtual tour instead of having our big open house. So come on, let's go. So this here is our engine. This is the first piece of equipment that goes out whenever we get a fire call or a fire alarm. And this has everything that we need on it in order to uh, fight a fire. So if you see back here, this is all of our equipment that we use and we can bring in, well some of it. And so we have flashlights that we can bring into the house so we can see better. And we also have radios here that we can communicate with each other so that way all of our officers and everybody on scene knows what's going on. We also have our Scott air packs here. This is what we use in order to be able to breathe when we're inside the fire. It's just air that's inside the bottle and we just put, strap it right onto our back and then we can breathe. So this here is our pump panel. This is where all of the different hoses can be controlled from. Every single hose on the, the truck has a connection here so that way we can um, supply each hose with water. It also shows you the water of how much water is in the truck. And then it also tells you here about the intake and discharge pressures of how much water is coming into the truck and how much water is leaving. So this is where I wanted to talk about our first fire prevention thing, which is called smoke detectors. So this one here is a little bit older, um, but there's newer ones also, but they all should look similar to this, where they're round and they're usually gonna be on your ceiling or up top towards the, the top of the wall. So what the smoke detector is gonna do is it's gonna be able to tell you whenever it, it smells smoke in your house. So it's gonna alarm really, really loud and it's gonna tell you that there's smoke and you should get out of the house. So also I wanted to talk to you guys about carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide detectors look a lot like smoke detectors, except they detect a colorless and odorless gas called carbon monoxide. If you ever hear a carbon monoxide detector go off, you gotta get out of the house right away. there's still another way to get outside. 
Another important thing is to remember, don't hide, get outside. Remember, if you see smoke in the house, get low and go. One of the most important parts of your escape plan is to have a meeting place outside in the front yard. So that way, the fire department can find you when they get there and make sure that everyone is safe. So this is our light rescue. We use this for first aid calls. So from anything from cutting your finger to maybe grandma fell down and needed help up, we'll take this in order to help them. So this here is where we have all of our equipment. This is our made first aid bag. This has most of our stuff that we need, but we also have all of this for specialty equipment as well. So this brings up another fire prevention topic. Do you guys know what number to call in case of an emergency? That number is 911. The most important thing to know when you call 911 is your address. And that's something you can talk with your parents about and practice every day. So just remember, 911 isn't for fun. It's for real emergencies. So make sure that you're only dialing it whenever there's an actual emergency. This is our heavy rescue. We use this mainly for car accidents and carbon monoxide alarms, but we can also use it for any other call. It's a huge toolbox on wheels, so we have everything that we need for every kind of call. Pretty much everywhere you look, there's a place to store something. So this is the Jaws of Life. We use this for car accidents to help people get out of the car safely. Remember, stop, drop, cover your face, and roll. So next I'm going to introduce you to my friend Nick here. He's also a firefighter at Cleveland Health, and he's going to show you all about his protective gear. So the first thing he has is his foot. That foot is going to protect his head and his neck from any fire or flames. Next, he has his boots and his pants. The boots have a hard rubber sole, so that way if he steps on anything, nothing. 
protect his legs from any heat or flame as well. He also has knee pads, so he can get low and go, just like you guys. Next is his jacket. His jacket is going to protect his arms and his chest from any fire or flames. All right, so just like we talked about on the engines, this is the air pack. Nick's going to practice putting it on so that way you guys can see him in all of his gear. One thing to remember is when firefighters are wearing all their gear, they can look scary. But just remember that firefighters are friends. They're there to help you, and they're going to help you get out safe. So the next part is Nick's mask. So the masks are all individually fit for us, so that way we make sure that we have a good seal, and that there's going to be no smoke that comes in into our mask. So if you hear when he starts to breathe, you'll hear a sound that, that means when he gets into a fire, he'll be able to breathe. So the next part is his helmet. His helmet is going to help protect his head from anything that falls or anything that is, is close to his neck so that way he doesn't get hurt. The last part are his gloves. The gloves are going to protect his hands so that way he can pick things up that might be hot from the fire. They're also going to protect from getting his hands cut or getting injured. So Nick and I just wanted to say thank you for coming on our virtual tour today. And hopefully next year you guys can come out for Fire Prevention Month and come check out our hall in person. Bye guys! Control, no. 